Hey all, welcome back. I got the pedals in in the last episode, now it's time to get them attached to something. Let's start with the clutch cylinder. As you can see, this one's in a pretty sorry state. It was pretty ropey when I took it off, and that was 10 years ago. I doubt it's improved with age. I could just buy a new one, they don't actually cost all that much. But honestly, I think it would be fun to at least try and save this one. Well, the cap's stuck on, that's not a great start. So let's give it a bit of lubrication. And the cap comes off. Now that is nasty. I think this fluid probably needs changing. The cap's dented anyway, so I'm not worried about wrecking it. I'll get a new one. I'll need a new pipe as well. Now let's see if this will come apart. So far so good. And that's as good as it gets. This is seized, it's not shifting in or out. bit of brute force got this bit out no problem. But that still leaves the piston itself. It's stuck down inside and there's nothing I can get a grip on to pull it out. So if I can't pull it out I might as well try and push it in, at least to get it moving. But even hammering it wasn't making much difference. So I cleaned up the bore as best I could. and left it to soak for a few days. It took a few goes, but eventually I got it moving. Just slightly, but it was a start. I had to measure it to even be sure it was moving. Great, it's moving. In the wrong direction, but I figured if I could work it down far enough, I could clean the bore up where it was stuck and hopefully it'll be able to slide out again. I tried pumping a bit of air in there hoping that would work too. It didn't. So I did a bit of research and it turns out that pumping grease inside is a good way to free up the cylinder. I yeah, figured it was worth a try at least. I was hoping I could just hold the gun against the pipe opening and that would be good enough. I was wrong. So I tried bodging it with some tape. And that didn't work either. Obviously it's going to need a lot of pressure to get this moving. So I bodged this together. The thread on the grease gun is the same as a brake pipe fitting so this should hopefully work. It actually kind of did. It leaked grease everywhere, but it did actually move the piston. Well, I had plenty of grease, so I didn't mind using a bunch if that's what it took. So I spent probably the best part of an hour pumping grease in there and tapping the piston back down again. And little by little, it got easier and easier to move. Eventually, though, the inevitable happened. Whatever was blocking the reservoir freed up and all the grease suddenly started going in there. No big deal, though. I just stuffed some paper towel in there and put the cap back on. Where it immediately leaked through. So I sealed it up. Put the cap back on again. 
and this time it forced the cap right off. So I started getting creative. By this point it was almost there, I just couldn't get it past the last bit for some reason. Everything I tried, the grease kept escaping out of the reservoir. I ran out of grease in the end and had to start putting some grease back into the gun again. In the end I resorted to gluing a block of wood to the top. And then clamping it in the vise. And then suddenly, it popped out. Not completely, but enough that I could maybe clamp the piston and pull it out the rest of the way. So I got it out just enough that I could clamp it in the vise. And from there, it was fairly easy to pull it out the rest of the way. result. And now I just had to deal with the workbench completely covered in grease. That's much better. Now I can deal with the cylinder itself. First off, let's clean the grease off. I just got everything cleaned off with white spirits. It was a messy process, but it did the job. Time to look at the bore now. If this is all pitted inside, then I've just wasted all this time and I'll need to buy a new one. But no, it actually looks okay. Not perfect, but I think I can save this. I think there's a little bit of pitting at the bottom there, but it's not as bad as it looked. It might even just be dirt. So let's get this cleaned up properly. I scraped all the old gunge off first, and then cleaned up the outside on the wire wheel. And it actually scrubs up okay. All the internals got a good clean as well. Looking good. Now let's see what I can do with this bore. I couldn't find any bore hones that will do something this small, so I improvised. A suitable size round thing with a bit of sandpaper glued to it. I think that'll do nicely. So that just got a final clean, and then that's ready to reassemble. I've got a new rebuild kit that's got all new rubber parts. So I started putting it all together, starting with the rubber bits. This one's going to be tricky, that's a small hole.
Got it though. And then I started putting the piston together. And that's where it all went wrong. I noticed the spring was bending a bit weird, and when I wiggled it a bit, it snapped. Obviously it had rusted inside the bore. So I'll have to figure out some way to replace this spring, but as it happened two days before I published this, it means I can't get this finished in time for the video. Well, we'll just have to come back to it. It's annoying though, I was so close to getting this done. I even got a shiny new cap for it. Oh well, these things happen. Right, well then let's take a look at the brake cylinder. This is the old one, and like the clutch cylinder, it's past its best. The booster could probably be cleaned up and painted, and getting a new cylinder shouldn't be a problem. Fortunately, I already have a new one. This is for a Sherpa van, it's a fairly common upgrade for the TR7. I got this a few years ago when they were still really cheap, I think I paid £30 for this. I'm not going to be upgrading any other brake pass just yet, so this won't do much by itself, but it makes sense to fit it now rather than trying to fix up the old standard one. It's lost a bit of its plating already, but I can live with that. Looking at the two side by side, you can see the differences. The Sherpa unit's bigger overall, but other than a few small things, it's more or less a direct swap. I'll be keeping the old reservoir, so I'll get some WD-40 on that so I can get it off later. This part here is a brake balancing valve. I don't need it, so I'll just remove it. I'll take this reservoir off as well, I'll be using the TR7 one. As this has been sitting around for a few years, it's probably a good idea to check it. I'd hate to fit the thing and then find out it leaks or is seized up. But no, this all looks good. I don't think this is going to give me any issues. So I just gave everything a clean and that's ready for reassembly later. The old reservoir wasn't so accommodating, both the screws were seized. One came out with an impact gun, the other one just got chewed up. So I had to drill that one out. No big deal, I've got the ones from the new unit, and this cylinder's going to be scrapped anyway. The two reservoirs are more or less the same, it's just the TR7 one has the extra bit to make up for the angle it sits at. So I gave the old one a wash. And it came out pretty decent. A little yellow still, but that's just to be expected. It's 45 years old after all. Before I went too much further, I wanted to double check this would fit okay. Certainly the studs are the same pattern, so no problem there. But the push rod's about 10mm longer than the Sherpa unit. That can still work, but it would mean the pedal ends up a bit higher than it should. I know that would annoy me, so I'll make up a spacer to make up the difference. I was originally going to make one out of aluminium, but in the end I figured it would be easier to make one from epoxy resin. 
It's easy to work with and it's actually quite tough. So I made a mould out of some bits of scrap wood I had lying around. I won't go into too much detail here because this is a car channel, not an arts and craft channel. But I put this tape down to stop the resin sticking to the mould. Then I stuck the sides on and sealed it all up with hot glue. A paint can lid was the perfect size for the hole in the middle. And then I mixed up the epoxy. Added a little bit of black tint. And poured it into the mould. Epoxy is strong, but just as a failsafe, I put in a few strips of aluminium mesh. That way, if the resin does crack, then it won't come apart. That's a theory anyway. I left it to cure for a couple of days, then pulled it out the mould. Or tore the mould apart to be more precise. It's a bit more transparent than I wanted, but no big deal. This won't be seen anyway. So I sanded it flat and shaped it a little. And then drilled some holes for the studs. Using the gasket as a template was a mistake. It turns out the holes in the gasket are slightly wrong. So I had to elongate my holes a little. But all in all, it'll do the job just nicely. So, it's time to get all this together now. and mounted in the car. It dropped in nice and easy. And then I got everything bolted in place. And then fitted it to the pedal. I think that's just about right. Now the cylinder's in place, I can sort out the brake lines to the balancing valve. These ones are probably okay, but they're looking a bit scabby. I'll make new ones. So I cut the pipe to length. Filed the end. And then use my flaring tool to flare the first end. Oh, 
All looking good. Now I just need to do that three more times. Well, this isn't going well. I somehow managed to break my flaring tool. I can get a new die no problem, but not in time for this video. So that's something else I'll have to finish up in the next one. Well, that's all I have for now, so thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you on the next one. See ya!